like to do is run through my water meth setup. I originally purchased a Devil's Own unit and my original setup was to uh, inject post turbo. Um, I've since changed that and I'm now injecting pre turbo. The setup I have here at the back is uh, a tank that I had fabricated myself. That's a devil's own pump and I've now that I've gone pre-turbo I've had to purchase some other bits and uh, I've mixed and matched some bits. I wasn't convinced that the devil's own unit uh, had enough safety uh, to uh, run the pre-turbo uh, injection. I had heard of a couple of failures and uh, I just wasn't happy to use it uh, from a safety aspect. Um, at the base of the tank on the right that is the tank outlet on the left is a uh, level switch which shuts off the pump when the level gets uh, too low. Now the pump as I said is the devil's own unit I've got that set at 200 psi it will run at uh, 150, 200 or 250. I found 200 PSI to be quite uh, quite good for what I want. The pump outlet uh, goes out through the floor. Comes out through there and then runs along the shadow rail. Now you just got to be careful of any abrasive uh, points there so that we don't do any damage to it uh, as we go. Now we come up into the engine bay. Okay, what we have here is a 40 micron filter. Uh, that can be removed and cleaned. Uh, the filter sits between the pump and um, and the injection points. Then we go into a T-piece. From the T-piece we go off to an injection point in the throttle body. Now this is a non-return valve. That is the nozzle and nozzle holder. That is a 0 0.75 gallon per hour nozzle. Um, and basically what that does is just keep a steady supply of water through there and uh, it just keeps that area nice and clean. Now coming to the other side of the T-piece, this is a solenoid and this is where the pre-turbo injection is and we need to have pretty good control over that. So there's a solenoid valve and again that's a, a devil's own solenoid. Uh, which I had and they're quite good uh, so I use that. Now that is powered directly from the battery um, it's got a seven and a half amp fuse on it uh, so I, and I have no problems with that. Once this is activated by the cooling mist controller um, inside the cabin when it opens up and I'll talk about the settings on that later when it opens up it feeds into this nozzle and nozzle holder which is set up about 200 millimeter away from the um, from the, the the turbo rotor now that turbo rotor uh, before I put this on I had a look at it it's done quite a few thousand K 240,000 K uh, so sure enough it has some pitting on there with age um, I've looked at it a couple of times since since fitting this unit and there's been no advancement in that and I'll continue to check it uh, for quite a few thousand K to come. Um, this hose is a very firm rubber uh, and it's quite solid. Uh, I've had three nozzles in here uh, uh, in the time that I've been experimenting. Uh, it's quite solid. It, uh, looks, it handles it very, very well. So from there, we'll go across into the cabin. Now, Garrett actually uh, recommend that you be within 150 
to 250 millimetre away from the turbo rotor for pre-turbo injection. Alright, this is the cooling mist controller. Uh, the two buttons we have on here, that is where you set your boost. Uh, I have my, where well, you set your boost control, I'm sorry. Uh, I have mine coming on, the injection starts at 13 psi and it finishes at 17 and a half psi and my maximum boost is set at 18 and a half. So it comes on at 13, ramps up to 17 and a half where it's, uh, it's fully out. Now I have a cutout switch for the pump on my centre console. So that uh, just rigged up on the main power. So if anything happens, I can just shut the pump down immediately. Now this controller, all of the ancillary stuff with that is mounted in behind this kick panel. There is a, uh, a safety control box that is part of the cooling mist uh, system that you can purchase. Um, and this system with the fail safe box looks at all the, uh, the, the bits and pieces of the system and it actually learns as you go. Now when I turn this on, it flashes 411, that's, that's just a model thing, uh, and the fault light comes on. And then it's actually scanning and going through all the chapters, whatever you like to call them in there, and it says, okay, everything's fine, I'm ready to, uh, I'm ready to start. Now, the other day, I changed a nozzle without doing anything else, and I took it for a run, and the unit did its job, it recognised that something was wrong, and uh, it shut the unit down. So as I said, these, that controls the minimum, that controls the maximum. But if I wanted to relearn, I put both of these to the right, and it will count down, and when it gets to zero, it's relearn. It has to relearn again. And that's what I did after it cut out on me. I came back home and um, re, uh, reset it. Uh, I expected it to do it. Uh, I just wanted to make sure that it did do it. All right, so now it's ready to start. All right, now even though this is a controller, it is also a gauge. I purposefully didn't use it as a gauge and put it up in uh, anywhere up the top in, in direct vision, just for the simple fact that the three numbers can blink very quickly and it would just drive you crazy. So where I've mounted it, and I made that, uh, fabricated that bracket myself, where I've mounted it, it's actually hidden by my right wrist on the on the wheel. If the fault light glows, I can see it. If I want to have a look, I just move my wrist a few millimetres and I can see what's under there. But, yeah, to put it up on the dash would absolutely uh, drive you crazy. So I hope I've covered everything and I hope this helps somebody um, make a decision. As I said, I've, I've, I've mixed and matched with the devil zone and uh, cooling mist bits and pieces. The cooling mist controller is, is very good. I'm very happy with what it's, uh, what it's done. It's definitely protecting uh, my system. Um, I love it. Thank you, hope it helps some.